having many of looking at the news and having a little fun with the issues. So if you want to have some fun, learn a few things, and get up on the right side of the world, Doug Steffen's Good Day program on CRN Digital Talk. Be sure to check out Good Day USA weekdays, 3 to 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Chuck Wilder here, and uh, the original talkback created by an original uh, dean of radio and talk show host, George Putnam. Uh, well, guess what? Uh, right now, I have the opportunity to go to another legendary radio personality. It's Barry Farber. Uh, he is host of CRN's Daily, the Barry Farber radio show, and Barry is up for nomination to the National Radio Hall of Fame. Uh, he hosts the longest-running talk show on radio today, the founding father of talk radio. Now, the nominees to the National Radio Hall of Fame were selected by a 24-member National Radio Hall of Fame steering committee, and other 2010 nominees are going to include Howard Stern, Ralph Emery, Gary Burbank, and the public, you the listeners, are encouraged to cast your vote until August 1st this year. We'll tell you how you do that. By the way, uh, Barry show airs in over 11 million homes Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time, right here on crntalk.com. Barry, how are you? Hey, look, now, anybody who's not flying after an introduction like that is done for. I am fine. Oh, Thank wow. you. Ah, you know, it's it's all the truth, you know. I, I work with a legend, and I get to speak with a legend, and I'm surrounded by legends. And i got to tell you, uh, a little peep squeak like me should be, you know, bowing down to you like the president. You know, I would just I'd give you, you a work, half bow. <laughs> look how closely you work with a man we all still miss, George Putnam. Unlike George Putnam, I never smoked a cigar with Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the White House. Or drank with uh, Nixon, probably, or helped water, or helped water the rose garden. I think exactly, he did that. exactly. Who was it? He threw up in somebody's bathroom too. He was telling me about it. Might have been Roosevelt's bathroom <laughs> when he was a marine and uh, yeah, was now drinking. That's a legend for you. There you go. Yeah, mint tulips or something like that. And you know, tomorrow is uh, actually George's birthday, and I'll be playing part of uh, something that he did that they're putting together. So. Uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, he drank with JFK. That's what uh, Paul Stern tells me. Here's my question for you, Barry, and, and we're going to get into this uh, National uh, uh, Radio, uh, you know, Hall of Fame award. Boy, I tell you, just to be on the on that list, you know, even I don't know how many do they pick? Just one out of the uh, well, four I mentioned. Well, there's several. There's several different categories, uh, and uh, it's like a competition. I'm up against the Moon and Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> and the voice of Notre Dame football. But oh. uh, uh, the votes are still coming in, and uh, we're going to continue to wage a clean campaign. <laughs> there you go. Boy, how many times have I heard that? Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. All right. Uh, and the thing is, uh, I'll just tell the listeners real quick, you can go to crntalk.com. We've got the link right there if you'd like to vote for Barry. Uh, we're not going to threaten you, but, you know, you might as well do it because he's the number one choice there. CRNTalk.com, and you can also go to my blog spot, uh, blog spot, and I've got a link there for you. Let me ask you this. Uh, was it the fact that uh, you nearly failed Latin, I guess it was, when you were in the ninth grade and you started picking up all these languages, which means you were quite a talker? Or was there something else that got you interested in the well, radio? Interesting, interesting you should go back to that. I loved the idea of foreign languages. To me, the most exciting sound in the world was the babble of strange tongues in the marketplace. And I couldn't wait to get into a language course. And the first one was in the ninth grade, and it was Latin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought it was just, I was very naive. I thought languages have words, and if we learn their word for our word, then you learn the language. I didn't know about grammar, and all of a sudden I found myself at the bottom of an ocean of noun cases, nominative, genitive, accusative, ablative, verb conjugations, and I just sank like a rock. Uh, I made a D, and uh, I was so disappointed because I, I learned, you know, usually when you're motivated, you do well. I was very I motivated. I did poorly, but that summer... Boy. At a bookstore, I noticed a book 
Hugo's Italian Simplified, and I found to my amazement and delight that Italian was Latin with all of the difficulty taken out. You know, like you fillet the bone out of a fish? Mm-hmm. They had filleted all the tough stuff out of Latin, and all that was left was easy. Italian nouns didn't have cases. The verbs mm-hmm. changed a little, but nowhere nearly as horrifically as Latin. So that started me. Mm-hmm. And then I guess Spanish, French. Oh yeah, yeah. They In were fact, a little bit easier after uh, after the Italian. Absolutely. You know, uh, you were supposed to be successful in two years of Latin in order to be allowed to take Spanish or French. I was a failure in one year of Latin, but I went to the teacher of both Spanish and French uh, the next year at high school. I said, Miss Mitchell, I told her my story, the one I just told you. Mm-hmm. I said, Would you? I said, I've been studying Spanish and French also. Would you give me a test, and maybe you'll go to principal and make an exception in my case? Well, I, I wiped her out. I, I, I passed the Spanish test, passed the French test. She said, Very good, Barry. Now, I'm going to go to principal, Mr. Ruth. Tell me which one you'd like to take. I said, Miss Mitchell, can I take them both? And she <laughs> arranged for me to take them both. Spanish and French. So I started studying languages young, and I was too lazy to quit. Now, you know, uh, talking about not quitting, because you also got into Russian uh, languages and Slavic languages. So let me ask you now, Anna Chapman, did you try to get her on your show? No, no. Debrief her a little bit? uh, (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm glad you bring that. I know they were Russian spies, but Uh I kept looking at their last names, and seeing mostly his spies. Were any of them Russian? I think those are undercover names. Those are like illegal aliens, you know. Uh, uh. Yeah, his real name is Hector Gonzalez, but he's going by uh, Rodriguez. You see? Uh, well, okay, but both <laughs> of those are Hispanic. Now, I, I, I didn't know. No, no, the FBI makes it. <laughs> you you know, uh, interested in languages to, <laughs> to get a uh, uh, eye on your show. And I know you've written fantastic books about the languages, and uh, I mean, you could have just had a career all by itself. You could have been a professor in, at the University of North Carolina, I guess, if you wanted oh, to. Oh, what a memory you've got. Yeah, no, well, I got it all written down here. I, I can't remember anything. I, you know, it's, uh, I'm trying to figure out, uh, do I have another hour to go here? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> but interesting things here, you know, that whenever you, whenever you look at your career, like...